Day. Welcome to England. Look at the weather. Pouring with rain. Shocker. Oh, coffee studio. Today I'm going to talk you through how to get gluey compression once I get out of this depression. <laughs> rain is such a rhymer. It's me again and today I'm going to discuss with you compression. I'm going to show you a basic way to compress. I'm going to tell you how I do it and give you loads of other little tidbits of information as we go along once we get inside the computer. But before I start let me just explain a little bit of history on me and compression. When I first started working as a mastering engineer many moons ago we only had hardware. I had an SSL compressor and if I'm totally honest for about the first five years I didn't really know how to use it so I didn't really use it much which actually was more beneficial to me than I realized at the time because with compression you can overdo it quite a lot and especially when it comes to mastering you can crush things together too much things can start pumping things can go all over the place so if you don't know how to set a compressor up and if you don't know why you're setting it up in a certain way it can ruin the music so fortunately for me I kind of left it switched off and and I'd really hope that no one ever asked me how to use it or any detailed information. So if you are a little bit confused about compression and about using a compressor, when to use it, how to use it, don't panic. It's not the end of the world if you don't know and it doesn't stop you from working on some really good stuff. So I'll help you today with what I know about compression and obviously over the years, I've added to that knowledge and I hope I know how to use one by now and I do so I'll help you when we dive into the computer. Now I'm going to show you on an SSL compressor. Now these are kind of standard you get a lot of hardware modules that are kind of duplicates of the SSL compressor but what you find is all the settings are pretty much the same on all of them they might have the odd knob here and there for something a little variant of to make theirs a little bit different but you, what you'll find is the compression ratios and the attack and release settings are fairly similar. Now, when I say compression ratios, what do I mean by that? Hold on, let me just get a bit of paper. Right, I'm back, I have paper. Okay, so this is basics of how it kind of works. So what we have here is we have a line here. So as the signal's going in like that, then you have a threshold here. So let's say threshold, okay? And so you decide where that threshold is gonna be on the signal. So say that's a, I don't know, 20 or something there, making this up. So that's where it's gonna affect the sound where you've got the threshold. Now if this would be a one-to-one -one ratio because it's one's going in, one's going out, it's not doing anything. Then as you go, if you had it set to a two to one, you've got one going in and it's bringing it down two for every one that goes in. And then you've got four to one, and then it'll go down to like 10 to one, which because it's flat straight across like that, it's basically limiting. So if that makes any sense to you, good. But I have never ever worked that out until I had to do this video to explain this, what I'm talking to you about, because I don't do that. I've got a motto when I master and when I do anything is how does it sound? So how does it sound when I'm doing something? SSL type compressors that give the gluey sound, the standard setting is four to one ratio. That works, that's what everyone uses. Most compressors have a sound for a reason. People found that sound and then it's just how much you pump into it. So for that gluey sound with an SSL type compressor, it's four to one. But you don't have, if, if I went to mastering and I started thinking about those ratios and why I'm doing that and, and this and, and because it's bringing that down, doing all the physics stuff, I wouldn't get any work done. So basically I know that's what that compressor does. So that's what I do. So let's jump in and I'll show you on a virtual 
SSL type compressor, exactly how all of that comes together. So here we are inside of um, RX again with uh, Matt's track. Let's have a listen to that. Okay, there we go, that's working. And here we are with a standard T-Rex version of the SSL compressor. As I said, they do all have different features. This one's got a grit one, which is doing, I believe, the second harmonics as the compression works. So they all have their little quirks just to try and make them different and stand out. And that's what they're doing on this one. You can also use it in MS mode, um, but let me just, give you a word of warning, I don't ever use it in MS mode. I find I did for a bit because obviously I got into doing MS stuff, which is mid side if you're not used to that, or mono stereo if that's an easier way of you thinking about it. It does the um, left and the right, um, which basically, uh, well, that's for another video anyway, but I only use it in um, link mode in LNR because I just want it to be nice and tight, rock solid, and it's gluey. I'm using it for glue, so I just want it to glue the track. I don't want to start pumping the bass in the middle and all that kind of thing. Um, on here, yeah, it does have a side chain high pass, but the good thing about having this on a lot of compressors is the bass will generally tend to be the thing that's going to have the most energy. So that's the thing that's going to work the compressor. So by having a cut, so it's not you doing the bass, I tend to compress bass in a multi-band compressor so that I can generally have more control over the bass under about 100 hertz. And then you can use a SSL like this above that. So, so let's keep that at 60 for the moment. So we're getting rid of all the subs and all the bottom stuff so that uh, we know that this compressor is just going to be dealing with like the low mids and the mids and the tops. You know, like I say, I'd rather have more control over the low end and not have this being pump, get a pumping sound from this, which is what can happen if you have the bass controlling it. So uh, as I explained before we got into the screen, uh, the ratios, so on the SSL, the way to get the gluey sound is to have it at a four to one ratio. So that's kind of standard. Now the makeup gain, keep that at zero. This is for on your mix bus or mastering, remember. Now attack and release times. So attack and release, if you have the standard way of starting with a compressor, always for your mix bus or for your thing, well, I say always, but I'm sure there'll be a million people in the comments that tell me, no, nah, you're not right. But the way I do it is keep your attack slow and a very fast release. Now with the attack, by having it really slow, it lets all the transients through. And so this is how you get a really fast punchy sound. And when you're at the mix bus stage or when you're at mastering stage, you just don't really wanna suck it too much. You're going across the whole track. You're just trying to push it all together a little bit. You're not really trying to do anything too dramatic. So really you just want to have, you don't wanna start ruining your transients. So keep the attack on um, slow. And the release, now basically, if it's you want it punchy, you want it fast, then you keep the release on fast. Now, as you start pulling the release time up, that's obviously holding the sound a bit longer. So it comes through the compressor, and depending on the amount of compression you're putting through it, it's going to hold on to that sound a bit more. So the more you have on, the longer it's going to hold on to it. This does have an auto feature, so it works out for itself. But... I suggest using it on the fastest to start with, especially if you're doing anything that's dance music, hip hop, anything like that. I tend to use a slower release if I'm used doing classical and things. I've got a classical track lined up here so I can demo that to you. So I'll stop talking and I'll talk as I'm doing it and then you can hear exactly what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. So that's the setup. So uh, let's get Matt's track into a bit that's a bit pumpier. So let's bang that in preview mode. Let's. Um so you can see nothing's happening, we're totally bypassed. So if we put it in compression, now for me, that's working far too hard. So I'm gonna to have to bring the threshold down until with mastering and with mixing, you really, at this stage, the way you're using a compressor is you hardly wanna see this meter moving. You wanna see it kind of minus 10 there, or plus 10 it is on here, but you're kind of, you want it so it's just nudging along. It's, you don't want to see it moving. If you see it moving, you're probably doing too much. Now, I would say I'm probably doing too much here. Um, the gain makeup, I'm not going to use because I'm not, I don't want, there's no need for me to pump a load of level in because I'm not going to actually hear what 
guys doing. Um, I'm not taking too much off. If you were taking, say, I don't know, 4dB off or something, then you're going to have to... You're going to have to start putting it in and out. Because you can hear the level drops quite a bit when it's out. So when it's in, it's, it's dropping out quite a bit when it's down. So, yeah, you leave that. So basically, the way you want to set it up is this way. So you just get that back down to that plus 10. And you can see it kind of flirting with it. Okay, so now let's put the grit in. Let's see what that's sounding like. And then let's put the compressor in. Let's get it to a bit that's a bit more full level. Um, okay. Both channels would help. So let's go in and out. So maybe go in so we can hear it a bit more. So you can hear it's kind of making it groove a little bit more now that I've put that release time up a bit. I think we can go a little bit more. So I pull that down. You can see that's moving. That's probably about one or two there. But as ever, use your ears. Work it out with your ears. So leaving the bass, what I did there was I just basically brought the bass up a bit because I, I, that higher end of the bass, it sounds better when it's on 150 there. So I just tested that, had a listen, see what it sounded like. It sounded good straight away because what it did, it made, it stopped the bass from pulling out the, you know, working the compressor and suddenly the mids are starting to get more gluey because the bass isn't taking over. They're really sort of pumping in and coming together nicely. So let's just um, preview this again and I'll just bypass in and out so you can hear it what that's doing as I do it. As with all these things, you need to use your ears. So I can see it's moving a bit. Let's listen. Kind of doing a bit too much now. I think it's like bringing out that vocal too much. So let's just back that off a bit. I don't like that. I want it to be smooth. I don't want it to be doing too much. So let's just bring it down a bit. As I said earlier, you don't want this moving. You don't need it moving. Listen how much change it makes without it moving. Let's just move that down. No, it's massive amount, but it's not doing anything. So I'm just listening, I'm working out what it's doing. I don't want it to do a lot, I just want it to flavour it up. I just want to sort of just pull it together a bit. That's, I'm gluing it, I'm not, I'm not smashing it to death. All the transients are in there, but you can start hearing everything coming together a bit more. If you listen to the percussion, that all starts kind of coming together with everything. Yeah, the bass starts getting involved there. I don't want it involved. So 
you might at some point use this for then gain staging so you know okay I like the sound of this so I like the sound of how much compression is going on but if you want to get your level up through your equipment you might then add a DB onto this compressor so you're adding a bit of the flavor of the output of the compressor to then add into your chain so that as you go through each piece of equipment on your um, on your plug-in chain or on your outboard chain you're then adding a little bit of level every time and then by adding that level it all adds up to a loud track and also you're getting a bit of the flavor of the output of the different compressor whether that's a tube compressor or any kind of compressor that gives you a bit of vibe but again you've got to listen to what it's doing and listen to how it's affecting the sound because as you start turning this up, as you start playing with this, it's going to affect all the things after this. So you need to think, okay, well, how's that affecting the EQ after this? How's that doing? But it's just about using your ears all the time. How does it sound? So that's fine. That's pretty cool. That's basically as much glue as I'd give. And so all I'd say is most compressors always have their own sound basically um, and you find a sweet spot with most compressors now this would be a kind of sweet spot for most SSL type compressors playing with the release time if you've got another track let me just play you another track so that I could really um, broaden that out a little bit so if you've got a classical track you can afford to bring you can afford to bring the release time out a little bit Got a lot of bass going on, so we could probably add that in again. So everything starts sounding a little bit sweeter, a little bit more together. The harmonics are all kind of joining together. Let's take the grit off. So that's pretty much how I use it when I'm doing orchestral stuff. It means I can have a little play around. Uh, most of the time with orchestral stuff, I'm more likely not to use an SSL compressor, if I'm totally honest. I'm using something that's got a little bit more character, a bit more warmth, something like a, a Fairchild or, you know, just something that's got some tubes or something that um, can add a bit more tone rather than, and when you put release on that, you get more of the flavour of the compressor and that way it really colours the sound a lot more. So that's what I tend to do with um, classical stuff. But if you're just doing stuff that like pop music, hip hop, you know, dance music, then you want to be using SSL, really fast, pumpy, glue it together, everything starts kind of really sounding together and all in one spot and gets, gets moving. And if you just use a multiband to be doing your bass rather than using the sort of uh, a, a whole stereo compressor, then you'll get a tighter bass sound too. So I hope you've got something from that. Let me know any questions that you have in the comments. I'm happy to explain myself. Or if you have different ways of working with it, more than happy to hear them so that I can add them to my repertoire. We're always learning. So there you have it. That is what I know about compression. Well, I know a lot more than that about compression, but that is the basics. That is all you need to get going. That is all you need a lot of the times when you are mixing or mastering. You don't need a lot more than that. You start getting into other sort of tips and tricks after that. It's all kind of gravy, as they say. So don't be too panicky about compression. Use it in a very simple way, very subtle way, and you'll get some great results. If you like these videos, make sure you press the like button. I do these every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday and they go out at 6 p.m. GMT so that's uh, London time because I'm in the UK if you like these make sure you press the bell so that you get notified I will be offering kind of giveaways and things like that in future so definitely worth subscribing so enough about me but also if you have any questions make sure you put them in the comments I'm looking for things to do videos on so if you want a video on something let me know and also make sure you check out my TikTok and my Instagram links are below and there is sort of tips and tricks on those too so check those out that's another of me plugging the channel get subscribing get liking i'll see you on the next one bye